guys. Welcome to Chosen Explosions End Time Prophetic Revelations. My name is Evelyn Brooks, and I received a word from the Lord that I would like to share with you guys. Actually, this is a, it's a word, and it is a vision that the Lord gave me right after I received this word. I've entitled it, God's Severity and God's Grace, and I'm going to go ahead and read that to you now. It says, The oceans roar, the nations tremble. Am I not God over all things? Is not all power, is not all power in my hands? Can I not do as I please? I scoff at the wicked. I laugh at those who think they have power and that I will sit unmoved as they continue to do wickedly. I see, I know, and my hand is against the wicked. They will soon receive their, just, their just reward. The time of justice is here. The time of judgment is here. They will meet with my fierce anger and wrath. Their haughty look will turn to sheer terror. Their laughter will turn to mourning. They will run to hide from me, but there is no hiding place. They will desire death to escape my anger, but will only find an even greater wrath. My children... Mourn for the nations of the earth, that they will turn to me before it is too late. It is not too late yet. My grace is still available for all who will turn to me. There are many in the valley of decision. Pray that they put their faith in me and are saved from this coming wrath. I take no pleasure in the, in the destruction of the wicked. Yet great destruction is at their door. Pray for those in the valley of decision. All right, I'm going to say a word of prayer, and then I'm going to tell you about the vision that I had and what the Lord said about this. Father, Lord, we just thank you. Oh, God, I'm not Lord, I thank you for your sweet and wonderful presence. I thank you for your great love. Lord, I thank you for justice, and I thank you for mercy. Lord, I thank you that you are a good God, and you love your children very much, and you don't want to see your children oppressed. Father, I thank you, God, for your oh, your love, your goodness, your mercy. You're so good. You're so good, and we praise you today, Father. Now, Lord, we just magnify you, and we glorify you, King Jesus, and we ask, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in all the earth, and Lord, we pray for the harvest. Lord, we ask you that many, many, many souls are saved before, before it's too late. And Lord, help your children to arise in power and help us to be mind, mindful of the harvest field, that it is white unto harvest. And help us, Father, to be mindful of the time, the season. Help us, Lord, to be busy about your business. And Lord, we just give you praise and glory because you're the one who anoints us. Lord, you are the one who empowers us to do the works that you did, Jesus. And Lord, you said that even greater works would we do. And Lord, we, we believe it and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, guys, there's lots of people that, uh, that have never chosen God, but they're going to. Um, th they will, you know, and while they're holding back, you know, I think uh, for many different reasons, I think the greatest one reason maybe is they've not heard. Maybe they don't understand yet that they must be born again. Uh, they must be saved. They must turn from their wicked ways. And they must follow Christ and what that means, taking up their cross. Uh, you know, that the death of self and uh, uh, becoming obedient to God and following God. Maybe they just don't understand that. Or maybe they do understand it perfectly, and that is the problem, that they, they're just not quite ready. You know, I know that I've heard people say this, and I'm sure you guys have as well, that uh, they're just not ready yet, you know, and what it is is they're not ready to give up their sin. They know that when they uh, make this commitment to God that they're going to they're gonna be good Christians and they're going to obey God, and uh, and they want that, but it's just not quite yet. They're just not quite ready uh, to, to do that just yet. And uh, so, um, so there are many who will receive Christ, and there's many who won't. And uh, we know that that's true. The Bible makes it clear that, that no matter, even during the wrath of God, there's going to be those that still hate God. And, uh, and uh, 
they will not repent no matter what they will not repent and uh, but it's not those that we're the most concerned about we're concerned about those in that valley of decision that that um uh, they just haven't made that choice yet but but they're going to and uh uh, God wants us to pray. He wants us to pray that all who will be saved will be saved because it's not the will of God that any should perish. And uh, and in this word, it said that, um, and it's biblical as well, that, that it brings God no pleasure, no pleasure to punish the wicked. Uh, he would rather everyone turn and be saved. Uh, but guys, I want to tell you about the vision that I had with this word as well. After, you know, I just I just felt the heart of God that God was wanting me to to uh, encourage people to help the saints to understand that your prayers are important, that that uh, and that it's important to God that we pray for the lost, and uh, and the Lord was helping me to see that there's many people who who doesn't really believe that 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 will help, that that will do any good, that that mass pray, you know that us praying in mass for the masses, um, that it would that it's effective, that it would do any good. Or that it's and, and that it's needful because it won't really help. It won't do any good, and and God let me you, you know uh, feel feel His heart for that. He revealed His heart to me in that, and and let me feel people's minds and hearts for that. Um, just feeling like it, you know, they care. It's not that they don't care about those that are going to hell. It's not that they don't care about all these things. They just don't really feel like that their prayers are effective. Well, this is what God showed me. He showed me that. As the saints, I feel God's presence so strong. As um, He showed me that as we pray, guys, I saw a white canopy just coming down over the earth and over people. And uh, God didn't speak to me anymore about that. But um, but I felt that, that what that was doing, that it was pushing back the forces of darkness, that is pushing back that oppression that's on people's minds as we pray, as we intercede for the lost um, that we, God wants us to know, he wants us to have faith that it works, uh, that it's doing something, that it's changing the atmosphere. And, uh, and there is a canopy. It was a white canopy and I saw it just coming down, coming down to earth as the saints were praying, interceding for the wicked, interceding for the lost, for those that don't know God. And, uh, and I just sat and wept in God's presence. You know, it, it even built my faith. Um, and let me know just how important that we should never forget daily to pray for the lost and not just to do it, but to do it in faith, knowing that it is effective. You know, the Bible says that, that the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and, uh, and it does, even when we're praying for people that we don't even know and uh, praying for many, many people at one time, that it still is effective, and God just wants us to know that. Well, and uh, to know, guys, that we are doing a service for the Lord, and you don't even know, and I don't know how many people that we have saved. You know, I know that a lot of times we feel guilty because we feel like we're not out there um, telling enough people about Christ, that we're not doing enough, but God wants you to know that your intercession is saving souls, even if you don't get a direct hand in it, that, uh, that it is still a vital part, a vital piece of the saving of souls. And you will not know till you get to heaven. We won't know till we get to heaven how many people that we had, and I will say a direct, a direct effect in them coming to Christ because we cared and we took the time to make intercessions for them. And we not only did it, but we did it in faith, knowing that, yes, it is changing the atmosphere. It's pushing back the oppression so that they can receive Jesus Christ, so that they will turn and uh, so that they can think clear without all that demonic stuff coming against their mind, that they can think clear and that they can... Um, feel the tugging of God on their heart and that they can clearly see that they are lost and that they uh, are in sin and that they need a savior and that Jesus, that he is the answer. Well, guys, I'm excited about that and uh, and I trust that you'll be too and that when you pray for the lost, uh, that you'll see as well in your mind's eye, you'll see a canopy coming down and know that God's grace is covering those people and actually helping them to, uh, to make that choice. All right. Well, 
Um, guys, join us um, Friday nights if you want to, if you want to come. And um, we have a, a small group, but a group of believers that meets in that chat room as we're having service and they minister to each other. And I just love that so much when the saints just minister to each other in that way. And uh, they worship God with us. And, uh, and then they hear the word, uh, me, or usually I bring the word, but sometimes somebody else will. But we invite you to join us uh, on Friday nights, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time uh, for uh, worship service and f fellowship in the chat room. And you can receive prayer afterwards and uh, get any questions that you might have answered. We take some time. Not a lot of time because we spend a lot of time in worship and the word, but we spend some time at the end to pray individually for people and to answer any questions that anybody has. And uh, if you missed that but you're interested, it is posted on this channel, um, every, usually Friday night late, it gets posted. Well, we love you guys. We're praying for you. And I'll be talking to you again really soon. Bye-bye.